Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. Start of the work week is upon us. 11.13 a.m. here, California time, August 26, 2024 is the date. Uh, we got uh, 1.4 earthquake here into the Alaska area. We did see a little bit of larger movement up here across the northern edge of the Pacific plate boundary. That's uh, Pacific and the North American plate boundary here. 5.1 earthquake coming into the Aleutian Trench just a short time ago. Let me show you guys the uh, earthquake out here. Uh, about almost 9 o'clock here local time, California time, we've seen this earthquake coming in. Uh, this is the area that seen an 8-pointer back... Uh, few years back uh, but the Aleutian Trench here quite active in terms of any type of earthquake movement uh, and that 5.1 coming in about 17 miles deep here into the area of the Aleutian Trench there was a little foreshock so to speak here yesterday afternoon 3.6 a little bit deeper into the area of the Aleutian Trench so not a big earthquake but a little bit of uptick here across this area of the plate boundary through the Pacific Northwest here, things uh, relatively quiet. Only a handful of smaller microquakes across the Cascades for now. Uh, Northern California, small amount here at the southern end of the Cascadia Mega Thrust area. Subduction zone, of course, off the Northern California coast, which extends all the way up here past the Vancouver Island Range into the Queen Charlotte Sound area of Canada. Uh, that area, of course, capable of producing uh, a 9.0 or greater earthquake, and it's been 324 years since we've seen that uh, type of release. Aside from the movement here across this area of the Cascadia, Northern California in general fairly quiet, aside from the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, which is hydrothermal plants over there, uh, taking advantage of the heated areas below by creating uh, some power. They create power. There's a whole process involved in the uh, creation of power in that area all right further down south bakersfield ridgecrest area only a handful of smaller quakes here today still getting a little bit of swarming here across this area outside of bakersfield let's do a, a quick tally see what we got for the numbers here 737 earthquakes in the last 30 days specifically within this area of california that's the region that's seen the 5.2 a couple weeks back so we're still seeing some earthquake activity here today and it uh, seems like every day just a handful nothing big but uh, still got to keep an eye on the southern california area due to all the increasing movement out here across this area recently uh, ridgecrest seen a 2.2 kick up right now and uh, further down south across los angeles pretty quiet in this area for now uh, a handful of smaller quakes around the san andreas fault Nothing uh, big going on here. Let's see what we got for 2.5. Nothing showing up here for 2.5 and above. <coughs> Excuse me. So, all microquake activity out here today. Well, one little lonesome earthquake off the coast here of San Diego. There's a couple different trough zones that sit out here. And these, uh, uh, these faults can definitely produce some large-scale earthquake activity. It's been a little while. I've always wondered here... Uh, with these trough zones here, they're, they're capable of producing some larger quake activity. And, um, you know, it's very close to a populated region. Lots of faults throughout the San Diego area. Uh, but it's been awfully quiet, specifically down here across this area recently. All right, further out and about, some typical, well, I can't really say typical, right? Because Las Vegas doesn't really see a whole lot of earthquake activity, but they have in the last couple of weeks. It's been a, a little bit of a swarm out here. And, of course, that is uh, following some events in certain locations out here in Southern California as well. Uh, we've seen numerous areas uh, showing some uptick activity out here across Southern California, including areas around Nevada. So uh, overall sign of some increasing strain against the plate boundary there, the San Andreas Fault. A couple smaller microquakes out there today just outside of Las Vegas. One earthquake way up north here around Yellowstone, but this one uh, coming in, Looks like just outside the Wind River Range. Yellowstone sits right up here, but uh, let's go double check that. See what we got for the Yellowstone overview. There is the uh, large earthquake from yesterday showing up there on many of the seismograph stations. That's going to be this reading right here. Of course, that earthquake is from the... Uh, let me show you guys. Bring this up here real quick. That big 6.9 down here right into the Tonga area from yesterday. A handful of larger quake aftershocks as well in that region, but uh, that's what uh, we've seen here. Let's 
what we're seeing on the uh, seismograph stations here across Yellowstone. So aside from that, we're really not a whole lot of local earthquake activity. Maybe a little spike here, but pretty quiet across the Yellowstone supervolcano. And it's been that way for a little while now. All right, uh, further out and about um, across the globe, aside from these large earthquakes here last night, um, see if we got anything bigger. Uh, nothing bigger, but 5.8 Panama. We covered that last night. That was subsequently followed by a four-pointer over here around the uh, Dominican Republic. That goes to show you that the strain out here against the Middle America Trench on the Cocos Plate, or on the uh, Caribbean Plate, is quite high. This area of the Caribbean Plate in general gets squeezed around by two major plates all around it. Uh, even the uh, Cocos Plate here adding to the strain on the western edge of the Caribbean Plate. So when we seen that uh, 5.8 kick up, it was only about less than 10 minutes uh, before this 4.8 stirred up here around the uh, Dominican Republic area. So a little bit of strain there. Subsequent domino effect going on following that uh, earthquake over here last night. Not a whole lot of uptick here today though. Things uh, fairly quiet. Uh, let's see what we got here. A little bit of earthquake activity. This was from yesterday, that 4.4 into the El Salvador area, a little bit further upstream. That was a deeper quake. Um, here's the earthquake off the coast here of Portugal. That was a 5.4, little interesting earthquake activity out there last night. Nothing else going on there today from, from the looks of it. Pretty quiet. Um, the EMSC model here showing... A handful of earthquakes across the Mediterranean, some newer quake activity way up north, north of Greenland with a 4.3. The Indian Ocean area and fracture zones pretty quiet down south here. Uh, and of course, we've got the typical crunch zone going on here across the Taiwan area southward into the Indonesia Islands area and the Java Trench. All seen some elevated activity today, but that's quite normal. Uh, also, another region up here. I've seen some fours, elevated fours out here over a broad area of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Um, looks like USGS only reporting a handful of these quakes in the last 24 hours, but uh, we're seeing a little bit more out here across the Sea of Osk area and one directly on the Kuril Kamchatka Trench here. That's uh, an area I feel is definitely capable of producing some larger quake activity. Uh, now this region did see a large event here. Uh, week or so ago well it's been over that there it looks like almost about 10 days for that seven pointer that struck out there on the curl cam chatka trench handful of aftershocks in there as well fours and fives but uh generally you know this portion here of this subduction zone is capable of producing a uh, mega quake and it's been a little while since we've seen any major release of strain out here on this area uh, someone asked me, well, I forgot to bring it up last night far as the amount of earthquakes we've seen this year compared to last year. So I did cover this a little bit last year or uh, last night <laughs> on last year's activity. Uh, we had about 8,240 earthquakes of magnitude 4.5 and above. Now, if I were to add the threes and twos on here worldwide, it'd be a bunch more, a lot more. And we don't want to clutter it too much, but... Uh, yeah, that's still a lot of activity, right? Over 8,000 earthquakes of 4.5 and above worldwide for the entire year of last year, 2023. So where are we at right now? Pulled up the same time frame here, at least from the 1st of January this year to the current date, 4.5 and above. We're sitting at 4,173 earthquakes. So we're actually, you know, if you want to take a split here, if we were to go consistently... Uh, on the uh, earthquake activity that we're that we previously seen this year that would put us I mean it's August already that would put us behind in terms of the uh, earthquake activity out there compared to last year in terms of the number of earthquakes there in the uh, 4.5 department and above now certain areas have seen some elevated activity so far this year including Southern California area um, so this is one region that's you know obviously not normal. It's above uh, average earthquake activity out here this year. But in general, if you count the number of earthquakes here, 
um, compared to last year. We're somewhat behind uh, if we keep going at this number here uh, till the end of the uh, year. I think we'd be uh, below the 8,000 mark in terms of 4.5 and above. But, you know, you can really never compare certain years to others because, say, for example, uh, if we have an eight-pointer or a large seven-pointer, there's going to be a number of earthquakes uh, following that large event in terms of lower magnitudes, and that can accumulate uh, the numbers up here in terms of worldwide activity. So um, I don't really go off of, you know, how many we've seen here this year compared to last year. The bigger quakes, yes. Um, and so far, far as the, um, let's see what we got for largest magnitude. Uh, 7.5 there, eastern side uh, or western side of Japan. You guys remember that uh, around New Year's, seen that uh, pretty large earthquake out there. And, uh, of course, the more recent 7-pointer down here across the subduction zone area, 7.1. So we got, uh, let's see, no 8s yet. I'm still working and still think that we should see some 8s pretty soon here. We're supposed to see one every year, if not every year, every other year. And the last 8-pointer we've seen was back in 2021, so three years ago. Um, could be coming up here soon that we'll see an 8-pointer. No 8-pointer. Oh. No eight pointer this year, no eight pointer last year. Uh, 7.8 there in the, um, uh, remember those series of earthquakes out there in Turkey? That was, uh, man, that's been over a year now. Well over a year. That's crazy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, earthquakes are very common out here, folks. Plate tectonics are always in motion. Uh, it may not seem like it, but uh, there is. I mean, like I say, eight, over 8,000 earthquakes here. 4.5 and above from last year. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything else major going on here. We'll check out the globe here real quick. No more activity down across the uh, Tonga Trench for now. New Zealand pretty quiet. That's a little odd. Nothing going on following that event yesterday. Hawaii, fairly quiet. A couple smaller microquakes out there. 2.3 coming into Southern California right now. Let's see where that earthquake is. Looks like that's just off the San Andreas Fault here. Uh, outside of Gilroy on the uh, Sargent Fault Zone. 3.1 uh, miles below the surface here for a 2.3. Not a big earthquake, but, uh, you know, they come and go, right? These earthquakes... They come and go. Sometimes it sits for a little while, and then sometimes it'll really ramp up. Uh, Southern California in general has been on the uptick side here this year, and more recently in the last couple months. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that area. All right, uh, what else we got? Space weather activity. Got a little bit of sea flare activity overnight, looks like. Really nothing major going on there across the board in terms of solar flares. There's the uh, most recent... Sea flare activity. It looks like there was a couple, maybe uh, some CMEs produced there from those flares, but uh, I don't think any of them are directed. If they are, it's fairly weak. Green across the board in terms of the aurora forecast. Not a whole lot of auroras out there in the forecast for now. Fairly minimal. No major uh, expected storms, and the flare threat level sitting at about 20% chance for X flare, M flare at 70, C flare around 99% chance or so. And um, we do have numerous sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. As you can see here on the, the uh, magnetogram image, Earth-facing side of the sun. Although, uh, let's see here, really not a whole lot of complexity with these sunspots. Uh, this is the area that's seen some inflare activity recently. It looks like it's starting to degrade a little bit. This area over here is showing a little bit of growth. We do have uh, a couple different regions coming around the eastern limb that we'll watch in the coming days, see if there are any uh, complex sunspot activity over there. These are the regions that were out here a couple weeks back. I can't remember the sunspot numbers because they go through uh, around the sun numerous times and they get renamed every single time they come around the earth-facing side of the sun. So these are former sunspots and uh, it doesn't look like it's too active right now, but it's hard to tell. We'll get a better view of those in the coming days. Storm Prediction Center out here. we got an uh, enhanced area for some severe weather across portions of South Dakota and Minnesota. 
2% and 5% probability here of some tornado activity. So just a heads up, if you're around this town, Waterton, South Dakota, uh, Wilmar, Min uh, Minnesota, Brookings, South Dakota, heads up. Keep an eye on the sky. Keep your weather radio handy today. Uh, there's some big time wind and some large hail threats out there as well within the zone. So a little, little day of some severe weather possibilities today. All right, let's check out uh, the close approach asteroids out here from the NASA site showing the uh, next five asteroid approaches. Uh, looks like today we got, well, tomorrow, 110 foot asteroid, about an airplane size, coming in with a, about, looks like 2,900,000 and something miles here. That's uh, kilometers here, going to be uh, well over uh, 4 million kilometers. Looks like the following day there, 130-foot asteroid. All these are fairly distant, though. I mean, there's really nothing of super close approach here. Once it gets under, say, for example, we get something coming within about 30,000 miles of the Earth, then I'll jump in here and cover this more in an orbital viewer. We'll take a look at the path of this asteroid and see how close it comes in a, uh, a close-up view of the uh, the, the plane that this the uh, not the plane but the earth the earth plane along with the asteroid plane that uh, uh, would be uh, you know providing that close approach there to earth but there's really nothing here at all that is even close or uh, worthy of opening up the orbital viewer to track that these are all way away from earth all right uh, what else we got here folks anything major going on out here it's a Monday and uh, I just started up the fall semesters here at the college once again here in Northern California. So going to be busy here on this end. I'll definitely, of course, be able to get the updates in uh, in the morning and afternoon, evening time period. And, of course, whenever there's some major events out here, we're always going to be able to uh, get some information out there. But uh, I'll also be busy here on this end with a bunch of lectures and other school activities going on here for the fall semester. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, seismograph stations here, fairly quiet. A couple smaller earthquakes there on the Petrolia station, that's in Northern California, and a little earthquake there in the Philippines, but nothing big coming in right now. We'll keep an eye on the graphs and we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Enjoy your Monday, folks. Stay cool out there.